morning, everybody. Happy Monday, new quarter, new month. It's time to get into the game plan. I have so much to show you today in the charts. Let's get started. All right, right into the action we go. So number one, we're gonna look at the market blast. Take a look, folks, new website. I'm gonna go over this in just a minute with you guys, but it is awesome. Now again, this is gonna be a little smaller than on Twitter. I can zoom in on it a little bit, but nonetheless, what we're looking at here, guys, we have equity markets are set to open slightly higher as the new quarter begins. Now, one of the caveats here is that when you have a new month and new quarter, there tends to be additional money that flows into the market during a bull run. Basically, what ends up happening is people get a certain allotment on their 401ks, on their retirement, or on any other thing, and they generally will push that money into the markets in a bull run. So that's often why you'll see initial upside in the stock market on the first day of the month and generally on the first day of the quarter. It's new money flow coming into the market. Now, one of the things I watch for is what if we don't see an update today? What if the futures, which are up right now, end negative? That would be a very bearish initial signal for the overall markets going forward. Number two, March marked the fifth straight up month of gains with the S&P in a row. That is a gain of 3.1%. 3.1% may not sound like a lot, but if you multiply it again out, that's on pace to be a substantial yearly move. Again, a month of 3%, you're talking about on pace to do like 36% if you map that out. So big gains five months in a row. Historically, you don't get very many more months in a row uh, continuation to the upside, so just be a little bit cautious now. In addition, I know a lot of you guys don't pay attention to this, but the markets are entering Mercury retrograde here today, starting today. And one of the things that I've scanned and I've noticed is that during Merc Mercury retrograde, there tends to be more angst in the market, more volatility. So just also be ready for that. We see the VIX trading at 13. China manufacturing activity expanded for the first time in six months. I'm gonna talk about some Chinese stocks today. I continue to think that as a small allocation in my portfolio, I actually like this. The valuations, you're seeing stocks like Alibaba, Baidu, and some of these other ones, they're trading trading at such ridiculous forward PEs of like eight versus the S&P at around 25. So there's a big disparity here. Granted, it's partially the economy in China. It's partially the risk of uh, invasion of Taiwan, but they're starting to look like they're breaking out. We've talked about the K-Web before. Tesla announces a $1,000 price hike here. Again, that's on model-wise in the United States. So again, after a lot of cuts, it seems like Elon Musk is backing back on some of those price cuts, inching prices just up ever so slightly. ISM manufacturing PMI for the U.S. will be out at 10 a.m. today. We'll watch to see the market reaction. And then, of course, we have Bitcoin got a weekly, monthly, and quarterly close above the previous all-time high of 69200 I talked about that. We're going to kind of delve into what the charts are saying. Is it a real thing or is it a rug pull here? We're going to look at that in just a minute. All right, lastly, gold, guys. Gold is the stellar mover here. And again, gold, guys, seeing new all-time highs day after day, it's now actually ripping percentage-wise, I think since the start of this year, even just over the last, I think since in the last two months, it's almost up 15%. For gold, that is monumental. You don't see moves like that in gold. All right, guys, we're going to quickly do the spin to find out who won. Remember, it was verified investing alerts, three months of that service. Uh, that's a value of $225. Uh, just a key note here is that it's now on the new verifiedinvesting.com website under uh, smart money uh, trade alerts uh, for crypto. Smart money trade alerts crypto. All right, let's get it started, guys. Who's winning this? And we'll do the wheel spin in just a little bit. Let's see what we got here. Who's the winner today? And again, we'll do that wheel spin, the wheel of appreciation, because as always, guys, I really appreciate you guys tuning in every day. All right, S Santosh. Santosh Tiwari, 1967. Santosh Tiwari, 1967. Reach out to Lawton at verifiedinvesting.com. All right, guys. So again, good stuff there. Let's get into some chart action. So I'm going to quickly go over a chart of the S&P and the NASDAQ, and then I want to show you guys the incredible information. When we go to this new website, guys, and it just launched on the weekend, my team here, 
unbelievably good job of getting everything together for this new site. But the information that I have on this is everything as a trader that I look for on a daily basis to give me insights into the market is on that data center homepage. And I'm gonna to continue to keep it updated with my team of all the best data. This isn't about hype. This isn't about anything else. Verified investing is where I want you guys to feel comfortable that you're getting facts and data, not all the BS that's out there around the rest of the internet. All right, number one, what we know here is the NASDAQ 100 has broken. You can see here retracing to the scene of the crime. This to me is a signal at least quarterly now, and I'm going to talk about some quarterly projections. I actually believe that we should see, based on the signals in the charts, that we should see a 10% correction from the highs on the NASDAQ 100 in this quarter. In the next three months, I'm calling for a 10% correction. Now, you might say, wow, that seems crazy. What are the odds of that, et cetera, et cetera? Well, listen, the odds are the odds. But one of the things I do want to show you guys right here on the charts is that if we go to the RSI, and this is key, I'm going to change the color on this and we're going to make it a bigger line because I want you guys to have this ability to view it's a very clear negative divergence and this negative divergence isn't just a short-term negative divergence what we see here on the chart is that downward continual down sloping while price has been continually going up right so again that is an epic negative divergence for those of you that don't understand negative divergences on the RSI essentially what it tells you is that the underlying money is unloading so essentially I look at it like smart money is slowly unloading they know the end is near essentially and what you're seeing is the retail crowd has still hyped up about new all-time highs money flowing in all of these exciting things going on with AI and they're continuing to push it in that direction so that's key we have obviously this wedge pattern that broke down that's a key if you look at wedge patterns historically when you break down from a wedge pattern oftentimes you do a retrace to the scene of the crime but it's very rare you don't get a more significant correction out of a wedge pattern. We, in fact, use this in day trading on a daily basis to generate serious profits by using this same pattern just on a smaller time frame, like a one minute or a 10 minute chart, and it works. We've made a lot of money this year using this pattern. So I would anticipate that that will be achieved as well on the NASDAQ 100. If we look quickly here, guys, what we see here, we know we confirmed on the S&P. Now, the S&P did kind of a retrace to the scene of the crime. We're going to kind of be bubbling up there again today, but we'll see if the S&P starts to roll over. The reason why the NASDAQ confirmed first and is much weaker is because it's so concentrated in these mega cap stocks. Well, the S&P is 500. Remember, the NASDAQ 100 is just 100 stocks and it basically has a 50% weighting in the Magnificent Seven. So once those stall out, it's going to obviously stall out the NASDAQ 100. The S&P 500, sure, those Magnificent Seven have about a 20 to 25% rating but or weighting, but it's much smaller than what we see in the index overall because it's 500 stocks. So you have energy, you have utilities, you have you know industrials, all of these other things that are helping now. They're playing a little bit of catch up in the markets to kind of keep the S&P up a little bit stronger while the MAG-7 start to stall out a little bit. Okay, so just something to keep an eye on there. All right, we're gonna go into more charts, but follow me over here, guys. I wanna show you this, right? So this is the new website right here. I wanna walk you through because this freaking thing is amazing, right? Now you can see me right there, and again, that's live actually, so if you ever just wanna watch the game plan or any of our shows, very weird for me to be on live while watching myself live. But okay, in any case, that's what it is, right? We have our tickers up here, you have Bitcoin, you can go to the side here, and we have all of your quotes up here, gold, oil, um, again, on and on here. As we scroll down, well, by the way, we have all the courses, courses right here, trade alerts, trading rooms, live workshops, elite groups, advanced trader analysis. I'm not even going to worry about that because honestly, guys, I'm not so keen on you guys even purchasing anything. I want you to use the free stuff. The free stuff is where the money's at. Financial news and insights. All right, I've already written multiple articles today, Morning Market Blast, Dow Strong as it hit and gets to target. There's housing data here. These are all articles from myself and my team. All right, let's go down so we don't have to look at me on a second screen there. All right, down here we have our past 
uh, lives, right? We have all of our past lives right in this range. And again, very interesting there as well. As we scroll lower, this is where you get the nitty gritty, right? This is where we look at key verified charts, right? So you can look at these. Here's gold breaks out. Here's the target of gold. You have the Med Metafast charts. Here's crypto, crypto charts, Michael Saylor's MicroStrategy, Cardano charts, and these will be updated on a regular basis. And again, look at the arrows. There's multiple ones. Injective, price target, the case for 100,000 on Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, you click on this and it pops up mega size on the chart and you can kind of look at these different levels and see the write-up given. All right, now, as if that's, <laughs> but wait, there's more, right? But then what we do is when we go down here, we have our economic charts. So you have investor insight, home sales a price, okay? Price data here, market cap to GDP, 10-year yield chart signals weakness. All right, all of these kind of things popping up for you guys. Same thing, clickable, going right to the stats. If we drop, jump on that, look at what we have right here on the data. So all the data that you need is right here. But wait, there's more. Okay, now as we scroll down here, we have economic metrics, right? Jolts data coming out later this week, the chart of the Jolts data with a write-up, what to expect, what to look for, non-farm payrolls, on and on and on. And again, folks, as we go through here, let me just see. I think our tech team might be doing some updates. We have shorts here. Oh, no, there we go. Heat maps as well. So we got our heat maps, crypto heat map right here. What I love about this, folks, is you can zoom in. You can zoom in on anything. And by the way, you want to click on one of the heat maps, on, on one of the symbols. It brings up a chart right here. You can do all your charting on the website. So literally, this is the coolest thing. Like literally, it excited me because this is what I love. Lastly, I'll just show you this. And by the way, we're gonna be adding more and more stuff. We've got our index, our fear and greed index for stocks, the Fed watch tool. You just click on that, it becomes big. All of these things are clickable. And here's your crypto fear and greed index. All right, guys. So in any case, I'm not gonna spend any more time on that because I ultimately just wanted you to see the, the, the benefits of what I'm doing. The more things I use in trading, the more things I'm gonna put on that homepage for you guys to use. My ultimate goal is after 25 years of trading, there are things that I look at and then there are things that I don't look up. The things that I look at will be on that homepage for you. You can obviously check out all the other services that we offer. All right, so let's talk Bitcoin. As long as we're talking about Bitcoin and crypto here, let's look quickly at Bitcoin on this. Then we'll do a quick wheel spin and obviously thank our amazing sponsors. So Bitcoin got its first daily, uh, weekly, monthly, and quarterly close above 69.2. I did say that that would be bullish, and it is, right? So as long as you don't close on the weekly back below that, that remains bullish. However, Today, and this is, by the way, to members of my Smart Money Crypto service, I talked about this, but one of the things that we have to watch is we have a bull flag of consolidation here. So that is also bullish as long as that pattern holds. However, if we start on the daily trading down in this range, the bull flag fails. Now, on a basis, let's say, let's, let's, let's do some hypotheses, right? Let's say the bull flag fails and we start trading lower. Does that mean that it's all of a sudden bearish? The answer is no, not until you get a weekly close back below 69.2. All right, so you have to watch it in stages as we go. But as of now, as long as we maintain 69.2 on a weekly basis and the bull flag remains, you have to think that we're headed back up to 74, just under 74, and then potentially even higher on Bitcoin's price. But again, just be aware, it's a little suspicious. The one thing that kind of raises my eyebrows, and again, I'm always a contrarian thinker, is that if you go on social media, everyone's like, oh, it just closed above the, we the weekly, the monthly, the quarterly closed. In fact, I saw Pompliano on CNBC today, and he was saying, you know, the last time we got to close above this, Bitcoin ran 300%. To me in my head, I think, oh, are the institutional money just wanting to get the last bulls on board so that they can pull that rug from underneath. That's the way my brain thinks. It's like a messed up way of thinking, but I'm always, because I've been burned so many times in my early career learning how to do this stuff, I can't help but be skeptical. It's just the way I am. A lot of you guys maybe aren't at that stage yet where you've been burned that many times, but over time you start to become more and more like that 
in your mind. Couple other charts here, guys. I've talked about the injective chart with a potential for a breakdown. Look at how weak this is. If you look at Bitcoin, compare it to this. Look at how this line, look at where price is, right there on that level. And again, if you get a close below this level, especially with confirmation, I continue to think we're headed down to about $24 to $25 on injective. Look at how many times it's hit this line, by the way, just over and over again. All right, couple other charts here. Ethereum, I know you guys want to talk some Ethereum, so let's quickly look at that. Then we'll get into gold. We'll get into some other stock charts as well. But Ethereum, guys, here's the trend line to watch, right? So you basically have a level around $32 to $3,300. As long as price holds above, that it is a positive it's a neutral to positive bias if this line if you start trading below this level here then that is a technical breakdown and you have to start looking for significant downside short-term support would be this low at 3,000 but if you take that out guess where you're going down here now on the upside as long as you stay up here you could easily float back to that double top at 4,000, all right? So again, by the way, that's how trading is, by the way, or investing. It, it has these pivot points, these fulcrum points, right? Where when you're on one side, you tilt this way. When you're on the other side, you tilt this way. And this would be your fulcrum point right now. Fulcrum point, again, being which side are you on, which side are you, the probabilities most likely favoring. So as long as you're up here, you angle there. If you get below here, now you angle to the downside and the probabilities flip. It's a flip of the probabilities. That's what the fulcrum point is. All right, guys, let's quickly do a spin of this wheel, and then we're going to take a quick minute or two to thank uh, Lux Algo for being an amazing sponsor, guys. you got to check out Lux Algo and, and the premium signals. Like you guys know, I've already been working on multiple signals with them to debut in a couple months as soon as they get their marketplace up or whatever but again just they are awesome they are truly awesome so let's see the wheel of appreciation spins oh ho, ho, ho. there you go three hundred dollars in credits so that's three hundred dollars guys to anything on verified investing all right, so on the new website, we'll do the drawing tomorrow, but $300 in credits, you can choose whatever you want on there, up to $300. You could even probably do more than $300, you just have to pay the difference, but nonetheless, $300 in credits for products on Verified Investing. So again, guys, very cool, and as always, folks, if you want to be a sponsor here at Verified Investing, reach out to Lawton at VerifiedInvesting.com. All right, let's jump back here, guys. We're going to do some other charts. I'm going to flip around just a little bit. I apologize to the camera crew today. We're just doing a little bit of everything. So if we look at this, guys, so Apple this quarter, let's talk about this. So the probabilities on Apple at this point are that it is going to go lower. Yes, it's still holding support, but the kicker is this, right? Is that you have this neckline, right? And let me, let me grab my pen here, and I apologize, guys. Just not used to going back and forth so much here. But basically what we're looking at is we have a head and shoulders pattern that hasn't triggered yet, but it certainly, to me, looks like it will trigger. And what I mean by that is if we look at this, right, very clear shoulder, head, and shoulder. Now, if you violate this level, which is around 169, that's where it kickstarts to the downside. Okay, so again, we'll watch and see there. But again, just interesting to watch here. The reason why I think Apple is going to break lower is because, number one, we know revenues continue to decline overall. Sure, they're doing buybacks and as well as other things. But, yep, that's a great point right there. We will be watching to see if this neckline breaks. If it does, 155 and then 135 is a target. Now, if the NASDAQ were to correct 10%, do we think that we would actually see you know, at 155, well, yeah, 155 is a no-brainer. 135, it might have to be a little bit bigger than a 10% correction to get Apple there. But certainly, again, if we zoom out on this chart, what are we seeing? We know that's our first level there. And by the way, just a quick teaching moment. How do I calculate that lower level on the charts? Let me just zoom out here so we can see it. So how do I calculate my target of a head and shoulder? Educational tidbit right here. We basically take the high of the head, Drop a plumb line straight down. So this is called the neckline, where you correct connecting right to the shoulders, right? Like right here to here. That's your neckline, right? And you take that distance and you replicate it from the break point straight down. And basically that takes us down there to about 135, give or take just a little bit. It's a good thing to know because, again, we always, when we see a pattern break, it's very hard to understand, well, where is it most likely going to go? Um, and in this case, we can clearly see that the likelihood, and by the way, not in stone, 
please understand that there's nothing that I say that's ever in stone. Investing is always a motion um, movement, always changing new data every single day that changes your projections. But generally speaking, that would be your target that you would look for. All right, guys, um, I didn't forget it. We're going to just take a quick 30 seconds to thank Luxalgo via commercial. Thank you, guys, and be right back with more charts. Have you considered enhancing your trading experience? We have an amazing tool for you. Luxalgo creates next-gen trading indicators to help the world understand the markets in a smarter way. They have the largest user profile on TradingView and are the only official Discord partner in the technical analysis space. Luxalgo Premium operates seamlessly with top platforms, such as TradingView and Discord, making it the perfect tool for every trader. Take your trading analysis to the next level with Luxalgo. Please visit the description below and sign up for Lux Algo today. All right, guys, we are back. So what I want to show you guys now, this is a chart of American Express. And some of these bank stocks and these credit card companies have gotten so bloated that to me, they look like amazing quarter um, quarterly shorts. So watch what we can see here. So number one, if we zoom out on American Express, look at the run this has had. Now, again, if this was like AI Central or whatever, you could say, okay, well, you know, it's an AI stock. It makes sense that it's up this much. But if we just go back to October of 20. 2023, this stock is up 65%. Now, one of the things I'm watching here is you see this, there's this kind of this channel, right? If you get a break below that channel, same sort of deal, you should see a big correction. So this one is on watch. I actually love it as a short. I have a small position as a short up in this range, and I like this pattern formation. Tight range, all right? The tighter the range, right? Educational tidbit here again, the tighter the range, the more likely it breaks out, uh, breaks down when it's upsloping. Now, downsloping tight ranges, which way do those break, right? Those generally break to the upside. Okay, so again, just understand that this would match this one, and you would generally expect this to come down. You can almost see a little bit of, by the way, a topping tail right there and a little bear flag forming as well on the American Express chart. Last one on this I wanted just to show you is take a look at J.P. Morgan. And by the way, J.P. Morgan, fantastic company, but does it deserve to have gone up this much? And when I say this much, what are we talking about here? Let's do a quick calculation. From same thing, from late October, the stock is up almost 50%. This is a bank stock. This is not AI. This is not normal, folks. Now, granted, is it because the, the Fed's just been giving them money left and right? Kind of, right? I mean, they've been giving them free money, free interest on their money that's been parked at the Fed. But either way, to me, this chart is a warning sign that something is going to break and you're going to have a large corrective move. All right, follow me over here. We're just going to cover uh, gold and oil and a few other commodities. Gold is just rock star status here, guys. I mean, this is just incredible to see the upside. The one thing I will say is you guys know my upside target is above 2,500. That's on the bigger macro move. But I want to show you this target price and how I'm achieving it that's a little bit lower for at least a pullback. Okay, now the pullback level is essentially, let me just zoom out. I actually have to go to my monthly chart. We have to go back that far. So let's do that. And basically what I did here to factor this in is take your high from 1980, attach it to your 2011 target or your high from 2011. And this to me would be the next level. So again, this is just above 2300. We're actually very, very close to this at this point, right? You can see that. But looking at this again, pivot high from 1980 to this high of 2011, and where's you, where are you likely to get a pushback, a little retrace? My guess is, by the way, you could retrace back down here before the next leg up, and that'll be just above 20, I think it's around 2320, don't quote me on that, you guys can do it on your own charts to find out exactly where it could be. All right, next up, oil, guys. Oil has now achieved that hit of both trend lines. You guys know I was bullish on gold, uh, excuse me, on oil down here. We were talking about a breakout. It broke out above 80. We got a target of 85. I then lowered my target because I found these two trend lines that were converging. We've now hit that level. Now, I'm not short oil yet but I am looking very closely at this. If this upticks just a little bit today, I'm likely gonna start a small short position. Now, does that mean Garrett's gonna be right? No, of course not. 
Very, you know, listen, I have plenty of bad calls in my life. That's just the nature of, of being an investor. I just want to win more than I lose, basically. But the point is, is that probabilities favor a pullback based on two converging trend lines. Think about it as if you have a wall here and then a wall joins it here and you get double the wall. And that, again, is very hard for price to break above. Next up, guys, if we look at natural gas, natural gas, I love this chart, by the way. And the reason I love this chart, <coughs> excuse me, is because notice how we broke down and I talked about this in this game plan. I said, okay guys, it broke down, now let's watch to see if it confirms. Or is it a fake out by the big money players out there that just wanna get you freaking out so that you exit your trade? And what happens? We went right back up in that range. Did not confirm. Look at price, boom. I mean, this, this stuff is crazy. I mean, you gotta learn this stuff. Learn technical analysis. You spend like five minutes a day. I gotta come out with like, like seven minute ads or six minute ads. I gotta do like six minute TA a day or whatever it is. Maybe you get it from these game plans because this stuff saves you. It means don't panic here, don't panic. Listen, you wanna be aware, but don't panic. And then what happens? Good thing you didn't panic because you knew about confirmation, right? All right, guys. Now, as I come to the end of this, we're gonna come up with a new question here. I want you to just simply write, give me your thoughts on the website, just a couple words. And I, hey, listen, good, bad, is there something we can improve upon? I hope you do like it. Um, but again, I want this to be the people's place to come for financial education. I want things for you guys. Yes, I do have to charge for some services because I have to keep the lights on here. Everyone you know, employed and everything like that, so understand that. But I'm trying to give as much free information as I can to help you guys do better in your financial quest. So again, just let us know. I wanna look through these comments. I wanna see what you guys think about the new website. Good, bad, the ugly, whatever it may be. You guys have a great rest of your day. As always, have a good one, guys. Take care.